So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at this all-in-one board. However, this is not your typical all-in-one board because you can install the motors right on it. What do I mean by that? Well, this is a flight controller and ESC and PDB built into a single board. So for example, just to put this in the perspective here, this is what you would do if you were to install this right here. All you need to add is your receiver, camera, and uh, VTX. And that's it. Yeah, that's, that's how much space you'd have left in here, which is really insane. Now, I really do miss these boards quite a lot because there wasn't many that have ever been released, especially in the F4. Maybe I can remember like two of them, were the Racer Star Star F4S and also the Airbot something. Now, I did use the Airbot. I really loved it. It was called the Asgard at the time. And now we have this one. Now, this is called the Racer Star Star 6S. So they're stating that it can run or it is 6S capable. However, personally, I wouldn't advise you run this on a 6S, uh, but you can. I mean, it's like running a Mamba 20x20 20 20 on a 6S. So this is like a typical 4S setup would be good. Now, I'll be building this on a high KV 4S to kind of give it a little push and see how well it'll handle. Now, um, what's really nice about these boards is also their biggest downfall. And what do I mean by that? Now, some people really love these. The installation process is so simple. Everything just goes there and you're done. And the motors go here and the battery goes here and you're all good to go. However, let's just say an ESC went bad. If an ESC went bad, you're going to have to replace this whole board. Now, I really did love these back then. However, back then, we didn't have such powerful motors as we do now. And this is supposedly 6S capable. However, I wouldn't trust it on a 6S. This is me personally. Filtration looks okay. These are really big capacitors here. They should filter out most things. And they also even provide you with a proper Rubicon low ESR capacitor, which is expected to be installed here. Running 4S or 6S, you have to install it. If you don't install it, expect problems. So let's talk about specs and also let's see how we would actually connect this. Also, the theoretical rating for the ESCs are 40 amps. So 40 amp, 40 amp, 40 amp, 40 amp constant and burst of 45 for 10 seconds, which is theoretical. Don't ever take these numbers, but it should handle, I think, 35 just fine on a 4S. And it could handle a 6S. I'm not saying it won't handle, but I'm just saying I personally wouldn't put it there. Also, we have black box logging. We have to hit 16 megabytes right here, which is really great. And we also have a STM32 F405, so we're rocking an F4 microcontroller unit. So wherever you install your receiver does matter. If you're using iBus, you can't connect it where you would connect your SBus, and we'll get into that also in this video. Also for gyro, we're using an MPU6000, and it just has a 5 volt regulator, 3 amp on board that is accessible, and your video transmitter will have to take battery voltage. There's no filtration for that, so keep that in mind as well. Now the ESCs are BL Heli S ESCs, so they're not BL Heli32 ESCs. And uh, the overall board design looks really nice. I mean, it's, it's a huge step up. They even have the edge plating this time. Look at that. That's really, really nice right there. I really like how it looks like. It's very clean. Uh, way better than their previous ones that they used to make. So there has been a step up. The design is still somewhat familiar, but I mean... Uh, the, the, this is just crazy how you design something with so many things on board. You, you have your OSD, the, it's, just, it's insane. So let's get into how we would go about connecting this, because I think that's where it's really important here. So the first thing anything really needs is power, which is a positive and a negative, or also known as battery voltage. So we're going to have to give battery voltage here. Here's the ground part. So this would be the black wire, and this would be the plus, which is the red wire here. And that's where your XT60 would go, or your battery would connect to these right here. Now, they also do provide you with the cables needed, but they don't give you the XT60, and they give you some spare stuff here. And again, I forgot to mention, it is soft mounted and with a pretty stiff one, which is really good. And some of you might not know this um, because when the motors are actually connected, obviously the motors are going to be connected directly to here and the gyros here, there will be vibrations moving down from the motors here. So you want as much filtration as possible or dampening as possible because that'll help in the overall tune or you know the overall flight characteristics of the quad. Now, something really nice about this is they also have the holes ready for us for the low ESR capacitor, which is a Rubicon 470 microfarad 35 volt. Now, if you don't know how to install this, you'd need to find this side, which is the ground side. Find the ground side on the board, which is the bottom one here, and you would install it like this. This is how I would do it. I would install it like this, add a little bit of solder here to hold this into place, and then bring in my wires for my XT60 and I'll be good to go. So that's just power right there. Motors are going to go here. Now, th and again, this will be installed in your quadcopter like this. So motor one would be here. Motor two would be here. Three, 
and four, perfect. And here's where we're gonna connect our camera, the video transmitter, and also our receiver. Now let's start with the receiver here. Now the receiver is very important. So for our S bus, which is FR Sky receiver, we are gonna to wanna to connect them over here. Now this pad right here next to the USB is going to be ground for our receiver, which is the black wire. So we would install our black wire for our receiver on the first one. On the second one, it's going to be our S bus signal, which is very important. So this is where your FR Sky S bus signal would be connected. And on the third one here is going to be the five volt, which is going to be the red wire. Now, if you're using Fly Sky, which is iBus, you would still put 5 volt and ground, which would be ground again here, and then the 5 volt here. You'll leave the middle one empty. And you're going to want to come all the way to right here, where we're going to find RX6, which will be the third one down. And we would put our signal right there for iBus. Very, very important. So that's where our signal would go for iBus. And then we still get the power from here. Now for spectrum, um, slightly different here. It's all gonna go right here basically. So we would have the ground on this one and then we would have 3.3 volts and then we would put our, our signal right here for spectrum which is on. Now this is going to be RX6, keep that in mind. So that is UART6, which means that UART6 will be the serial RX in beta flight. Keep that in mind, very important here. And next we're gonna go with the camera. So now the camera is going to be in this area right here. So we have G, which is going to be the black wire, 5 volt, which is red wire. And for some reason, it says VO. Hey guys, this is Mesh from the future. And um, I forgot to mention that on the documentation, it's saying VO as video input, but that's wrong. Usually VO means video output. I don't know why I didn't say it in the video here, but um, the typo is either on the board or in the documentation. So that's why I also mentioned something about the black screen, which you'll see in a bit here. So keep that in mind as well. So this should be your camera. However, I haven't tested it yet, but this makes sense right here. And also in the documentation, I just double checked it. This is where your camera would connect. And then we have the video transmitter, which will be the black wire to G. And then for some reason it says VI. Uh, that's supposed to be VO and that's supposed to be VI. But anyways, this is where your VTX yellow wire would connect to. Now you'll be like, okay, well, how do I provide power for my video transmitter? Well, the red wire isn't going to go anywhere here. It's going to go all the way back here. So your video transmitter will be powered from the battery voltage along. That's why you should also add the low ESR capacitor. That'll also add some filtration. So you'll get really nice feed here and that should really help. Now, if you do connect it this way and both camera and video transmitter are booting and if you are getting a black screen with no OSD, that means you're going to have to flip the yellow wires, put the VTX here and the camera here and then it, then you should get something. Now, if it's a black screen with uh, on-screen display, then that means your, your camera is not being powered up. Your video transmitter is transmitting and it's also receiving the on-screen display information, but your camera isn't being routed through. So keep that in mind, that might help you, but you shouldn't run into this if you do all of this correctly. This is going on a build again. This is gonna be, I think my next build, possibly I have two budget builds on the, on the way. Um, just let's talk a little bit briefly about this a little bit more. Now, what's used, what used to be really attractive about these boards as well is it was the cheapest stack in order to get you flying back then. However, nowadays, this is not even able to compete with the iFlight, you know, the Eco stack, the Mamba stacks. So it's of its own class, maybe. I mean, you could like think of like a super light build, uh, like a super clean light build, which this might would this thing could go for here kind of like a a five inch toothpick in a way because that's what the board it really is it's like a toothpick board for a five inch it just has everything look at that it's just insanely clean it's just going to make for a super clean build which is going to be pretty interesting and uh, i'll be setting up very soon uh to test out and well that's it guys everything's linked down below here i um, really hope you guys enjoyed the video come join my patreon i have a bunch of things for giveaway i'll probably be giving some of these boards out and some other things also i always do a lot of premium giveaways and you get access to my secret shop so come join i have a ton of things there that you're gonna love and well that's it guys i'll see you in the next one peace out